nestled along the tree-lined shore of Birdsong Creek in Benton County. Birdsong Marina and Resort provides a launching point for exploring and playing in the waters of the Tennessee River and Kentucky Lake. This West Tennessee water world is the product of the Tennessee Valley Authority and the projects of the 1930s New Deal. TVA has been a good father, good grandfather uh, to the recreational industry. We've taken um, we're still getting electricity and we're still having a provided a navigable waterway, but, uh, but we also have recreation and that's, we're in the fun business. Camping, fishing, hunting, boating and other sporting activities are all available to birdsong visitors. But tucked away in the calm waters just west of the marina is a unique operation that thousands of people visit every year. North America's only freshwater pearl farm. The Pearl Farm was created here by John LaTondres. He's the founder of the Pearl Farm. John LaTondres came to us in the early 80s and sat down with my wife and I and mother and father and we, he said we want to have a Pearl Farm here and my dad and mom was a little bit reluctant but uh, me being the young 30 year old as I was back then, um, the entrepreneur of the family, the marketing person of the family, I, I kind of nudged mom and dad and says come on let's go with it and uh, the first pearls emerged out of here uh, in 1985 when National Geographic came down and Fred Ward, the author and the writer uh, for National Geo, and they did 38 pages on it. So that was kind of our claim to fame, the beginning, the kickstart of the pearl farming operation. Tom Latendris met his wife and pearl farming while stationed in Japan during World War II. His technique and success would take several decades and a multi-million dollar investment. After testing over 300 bodies of water, Kentucky Lake proved to be the right place. Our pearls are take a lot longer to grow. We let them uh, get the minerals and the nutrients as the mussel is uh, taking that in in the waters of Tennessee River, which has a lot of uh, mineral content. Uh, the calcium that is uh, put through the soil, through the rock. Uh, West Tennessee is blessed with limestone and Benton County chert gravel and a lot of filters that, that produce the calcium. On our visit, we joined a church group which came specifically for the Pearl Tour. The tour begins in the museum with a short introduction by Bob. Speaking of celebrity, we will be speaking about one celebrity we all know, and that's Elizabeth Taylor. Okay? She, no, she didn't, but the pearls in her necklace came from here. Bob describes the two predominant mullocks found in the Tennessee River, the washboard, which has a rough wavy shell, and the heel splitter with a smoother shell and a sharp edge, which can slice your foot. From the museum, it's off to the marina for a closer look at these mullocks. Diver John Naren makes his appearance with his bag of bounty. Some of the washboards may be used to cultivate pearls, but here we learn about the mother of pearl, the thick inner lining of the shells. Washboard mullocks are thick and creamy white, while the heel splitters tend to be thinner and often shine with a deep lavender or blue. This mother of pearl is often used in decorative ways, such as knife and gun handles, and cleaned and polished shells make beautiful pieces themselves. After we come up, we'll dump them out. And we got different size rings that we dive the, we do the different species with. And if they're big enough, like this one right here, he'll go in a, a lake basket. And uh, then at the end of the day, we'll take them to, a, to the market and they'll check the grade and make sure they're okay and uh, we'll get different prices for them. What John is referring to is the most common use of mother of pearl. It is the stimulus or insert which causes a mollusk to produce a pearl. Sliced and diced, the small pieces of mother of pearl are then rounded or shaped. In a highly secret and delicate surgical procedure, this small nucleus of mother of pearl is implanted into a living muscle. Following weeks of observation to assure the muscle's health and implant success, the mollusk is placed about 18 inches below the water's surface, and the muscle begins to coat the implant with layers of nacre, creating a pearl in 18 to 36 months. Tennessee's mother of pearl is sold to farming operations all around the world. It's just a good grade of mussel shell. This Tennessee River is probably the highest grade mother of pearl in the world for the clarity. It don't chip, it don't separate. It's kind of like your inclusion in a diamond. 
It's kind of like a fine African diamond. We have shipped out as many as 50 million tons of mollusk shells from Tennessee to the Orient. Because over there, they take our shell and slice and dice it, cube it up, and make it into an implant, a nuclei, a cocku. And that seed goes into their mollusk over there in their country. So when you buy a strand of pearls from China or Japan, rest assured that, the, that that pearl was first created here on the Tennessee River. What uh, Don's gonna do is cut that, cut the skin or the tissue right above the pearl. So therefore you can see it before and after. And then the other one on the other side is the keshi that he mentioned, the little rice pearl. And that is pure pearl. Our tour group got lucky with this mollusk from the farm. It produced four pearls of varying sizes and styles. And this is what makes Tennessee River pearls so special. Asian pearls tend to be the traditional round, while Tennessee River pearls are cultured into special shapes, like teardrops, ovals, and flat coins. These shapes lend themselves to some very unique settings and jewelry. The culturing of pearls started out in 5th century China, but then was later uh, really proven successful by Miki Moto around 1900. Uh, Miki Moto is a brand name. It's a registered trademark name of, in, in America. It's a corporation with offices in Japan and Tokyo and, and China and so forth. The Miki Moto Pearl, really Miki Moto is the, the man that really brought it to the level of which it is today. Mr. Latondres um, lived here in Camden, passed away in 2000, but we've had the Pearl Farm since the early 80s. So for the last 25 years, the Pearl Farm's been right here in West Tennessee. These unique pearls and the rich Tennessee River mother of pearl has not gone unnoticed by state officials. The freshwater pearl is Tennessee's state gem. Governor Alexander uh, created the state's official gem. Just like the tulip poplars, the tree, and the mockingbirds, the bird, the state gem is the official uh, location uh, is here. But at that time in 79, the F Tennessee River freshwater pearl was uh, created as the state gym and of course it's in the the blue book and then just recently uh, Governor Bredesen uh, through uh, our senators here Senator Roy Heron uh, from this West Tennessee area and uh, several of the representatives went together and put a bill through creating this birdsong resort and the Tennessee River Freshwater Pearl Farm and Museum as a historic site creating it as, as the location the only freshwater pearl farming operation in North America. Birdsong Resort and Bob Key's Pearl of a Tour provide a fun and educational getaway for the entire family. Information about tours of the Pearl Farm is available at www.birdsongresort.com. Tennessee is a great stage. The stage is set for you and uh, we just have everything uh, in Tennessee because we're so diversified from music to, um, of course, pearls and, and everything that's in between uh, the, from Memphis to Bristol, even to the NASCAR Speedway in Bristol. So whatever floats your boat, pun intended, we've got it whatever right here in Tennessee.